head right here yesterday. And I literally feel pain, like I hit my head somewhere. But it's not. It's just because of the amount of work I'm doing, because of the amount of movement that I'm doing, Lucifer is coming against me so hard. I haven't been able to get rid of this cold. Like, I'm still sniffling. I'm still coughing. I still have a a rough-sounding voice. And I'm like, Father, why am I still sick? And he confirmed, it's because Lucifer keeps coming against me. He keeps trying. But there will come a point where God will draw a line and say, enough. Back off. And we're getting there. We're getting there. Because this tribulation, this part of it, was for me to reach the next level. And I have people waiting in line (laughs) to hear from God. And he's like, if they want to hear from God, they're going to wait for you. (laughs) I'm like, okay. (laughs) You know, it's, it's not me. I'm being obedient. I am doing what God says. I was supposed to go and help this woman clean her house three weeks ago. God said, no, tell her you can't make it until this date. I'm like, okay. And when I go help her on that date, she doesn't know this, but I'm not coming back. God is going to put someone else in contact with her. He's already given me the information. He says, I want you to go there, but then I want you to leave. And I'm like, so I'm basically just planting a seed? He goes, yeah, you're planting a seed. I met a woman that I used to know where I used to work. She was a a porter, a day porter. And we became friends. And we talked to each other every day. And she was one person that I did miss after I left that, that position because of the conversations her and I had, because her and I had similar struggles. She's an older woman. She was married, got divorced, ended up with a boyfriend who treated her badly. He left. She then met another man while working in the same building, and now they're married, and happily so, you know? And this man, And I knew each other. But what he knows about me is what the landlord told him. I'm tough. God doesn't... If if I'm working with you professionally, who I am for God, humble and um, soft, gentle, loving... I'm still all those things, but I bring a different level of myself, a level that nobody gets to see unless I'm professionally working with you. You see, I'm about to move into a different position at work, and I am about to give them a different level, a different Diana. When they turn around, they're going to be like, they know Diana the employee. They don't know Diana the leader. They've seen it. They've seen instances. They're like, but they haven't seen Diana the leader yet. They're about to. Again, God is my leader. He tells me when to show what skill. And there are times where I left Nick scratching his head he's like they told me this woman is just a cashier I see things differently I see hmm 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 okay now 
I've got to wait till next week to find out what this whole week was about because Cody hasn't really given me any information. <coughs> and I'm guessing the GM will have feedback. Because, yeah, he gave me two thumbs up, but I'm like, okay, what does that mean? So next week when the GM is back, he's going to get the download of everything that happened that week. Things that we have to change, things that we have to make better, what is good, that sort of thing. And when he comes back, then he's going to have a conversation with me and saying, here's where we're going to go from here. I'll be like, okay. And then we'll see what God decides to do with me then. <laughs> so as I'm drinking my coffee, I wanted to go get more coffee and God said, no, wait. I'm like, okay. So I'm almost done to the bottom. And so this morning, as I'm waiting for my coffee to, to get done, God led me to YouTube. I'm like, okay. And so I'm looking through YouTube and he goes, why don't you look for a song? Okay, so I hit the search button. Tell me how this happens, okay? I've searched for the last two years different things on YouTube. And God goes, hey, what's that? And I look down and I'm like, tea time with Ariel? What? What? And I clicked on it. <laughs> and I'm like, it's been two years. You took me away from her two years ago. Like, maybe a year ago. No. No, two years. Because when was the last time I watched her? Three years ago. Twenty. Twenty. Two. Was the last time I saw a video of hers. And. Apparently God had her change her. Her. Uh, channel name. To something else. Which is why she was gone from my view for such a time as that. And then now, he, and then she said some words that God has been showing me. So God is gonna confirm the words that he gives you. He's going to confirm the path that you're on. He's going to confirm the things that you're going through, through the people that he's using to lead you by the words that he's giving them. He doesn't want you to follow them um, like they're the God. He wants you to go to him, but he's confirming what he's giving you through them. Okay? He's been showing me the words excellence, precision. Um, he's been showing me words like... Um, mm, di indispensable. Um, showing me words like, and these are all words that she said in the video that I was watching, which I have to go back to after this. But as I'm, I'm sitting there listening to her words, he's dropping into me a whole bunch of stuff. So today, April 21st, 2024, God brought me Ariel Sparks, tea time with Jesus. When I, when I was watching her videos, like when I was a subscriber, I didn't realize that yes, I was maturing, but there were things that God needed to break off of me in order for me to get all of the mature learning that she was going to be providing. 
So for a season, he took me away. <coughs> and I thought I was being punished. Like I thought I was, like I did something wrong. I thought I, um, you know, like I, I'm like, God, what, what did I do? What, what, what happened? And he didn't say anything about it. He just said, just, he took her away from me because he knew I wouldn't walk away from her. And not because I idolized her, but because she was being used in such a way that everything he was giving me, he was confirming through her. And there was some learning I needed to do on my own with him so that I could be strong in my own um, ability, in my own skills, and not... um, fall into a place of stagnation or um, a place of feeling like like I, I do remember feeling like an imposter. And so God took me through a season of removing all that from me because that was one of the things that was left behind from all the witchcraft was the feeling that I didn't deserve that those weren't my blessings, that I was taking someone else's place, that I didn't belong in the place of honor that God was putting me in, that I didn't deserve the things that God was about to give me. He needed to break all that off me, and he couldn't do it until I was willing to let him take me even further. That's why the loss of my truck, that's why the sickness of my dog, because He took me down so far that I finally submitted the last things that I didn't, that I was holding on to. I finally gave up and I finally gave out the last spirits that were holding me hostage. That's why Lucifer was coming against me because he knew that there would come a time where I would recognize that I no longer was attached to those spirits, that I was now free, that I now could stand in the authority that God gave me because of my obedience to him, because he understood that I was going to come into a time of authority Authority that has never been seen or felt on earth. I'm coming into that authority. I'm coming into that anointing and I'm not coming in like a lamb. I'm coming in like a ram. Fully grown. Ready to lock horns. Ready to push the kingdom of evil back. God just gave me a a vision. So do you remember in the movie, if you haven't seen it and God leads you to, go watch it. The movie 300, when Linus has that scar on his face and he's telling Xerxes, you are not going to make slave of us. We may die in battle, but we are going to keep fighting. And I remember they're, they're, they're in the midst of battle and the Spartans, this is the vision God gave me, the Spartans have their shields interlocked. And as these droves of evil people are coming against them, they take their shields And they push them back. And then the next set of shields go in front. So that they're not losing traction. Every push, they go forward more. Every push, they go forward more. Every push, they go forward more. Until, (coughs) and this reminded me, every time I see this part, it always reminds me of the pigs throwing themselves into the ocean. Until they get to the cliff. And now these Spartans are pushing these people into 
the ocean and over the cliff. And they're just, it's like a, a well-trained army. One shield, push. Another shield, push. Another, and the reason that they're so successful is the people behind them are push, pushing them forward. So as the new shields come in, they get pushed forward. And the new shields come in, pushed forward. And, she... <laughs> and so in this word, in this word that Ariel, that God is having me watch, that Ariel put out, she put this out two weeks ago. And in that video, she talks about her changing the name back to Tea Time with God, with Jesus, because God led her to change the name, which is why I found her. Because God said, now is the time. Because now you are in a position to take your authority. Now you are in a position to use your anointing. To use the skills that I've given you to put the words forward that I've put in your mouth. And you will do so without fear, without anguish, without... Without feeling that you're not ready. God said the words that are going to come forth from your mouth going forward are going to break the shackles off of people. God is for everybody. God is for everybody. But everybody has a season, a beginning. So by working and abiding in God every day, you are now in a position to learn where you can go to get fed the Word of God. If you continue trying to do it out of your own flesh, you're going to continue to stagnate. You're going to continue to fall short because it is God who knows your level in that moment. And He will guide you to the words you need to hear in order for you to be fed according to your maturity level. You cannot grow until you are willing to submit. He has to be first. You have to submit to Him until you're willing to get on the floor and kneel before Him and give Him everything. You will not move forward according to His will because the vessel needs to be in a certain condition in order for Him to continue moving you forward. You can't stay in the level that you're in. You have to keep rising and keep rising because if not, you're going to start to find that the path is going to get harder and harder. By moving forward, after he pushes you, you will understand your next level. Because he doesn't push you until you're ready. You have the understanding. You have the knowledge. You have the wisdom. Now you can go to the next level. You have the skills. You have the, un the anointing. You have the new level. Now you can move in your anointing. But you can't do those things if you're not spending the time with God. If you're not spending the time listening to the words of God. Not prophets. Prophets are confirmations. Prophets are instruction. Additional decipherance of the words that he has given you. Because we, we, we only hear in part. And he understands that. He created the system. Who better than the master than to teach you the system? But we're never going to be the master because the master is always going to be ahead of us. We're always going to be his disciples. We are never going to be the teachers. Yes, we will get to teach others who come after us, but we will never teach the teacher. We will never master the master because the master is all-encompassing, all-knowing, all-understanding, all. The knowledge is with him. And he imparts as he chooses, when he chooses, where he chooses, and to who he chooses. He doesn't need a vessel that is 
clean and perfect and righteous. He needs a willing vessel who is willing to let him do his work through them. And that's all he needs. That's why he says obedience is better than faith. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Because if you're willing to be obedient to his leading, he will bring the, re the other two things in line for you and you will be able to move forward whole. One of the things that Ariel talked about was God honors commitment. But it's my commitment he's now honoring. Each person's commitment he honors. And through our testimonies, through our words of putting them forth and telling, explaining to people, I've been telling you that my life is about to change. My life has changed. Yes, I'm still in this room. Yes, I still don't have a car. Yes, I still don't have these things. But one day I'm going to push that button. Just like when I was in my car. One day I pushed that button. And I wasn't in my car anymore. I was now in this room. Just like that, one day I'm going to push that button. And that room is not going to look the same. He had me in Airbnbs, and then he had me in my car, and then he had me in Airbnbs again, and then he had me in motels. Now he has me here. I've been stable. I've been here. He's been giving me stability so I don't have fear. Because in order for me to be able to be stable with my husband, I have to feel the foundation be still. If it's rocking, if it's moving, if it's jostling, then that's how I'm going to behave. But now what you're seeing is a stable, relaxed individual who's had a foundation that's been poured underneath me that is stable, that has strength, that has endurance, that has patience. And I can sit there and I can stand as long as God needs me to stand or sit and not be moved, not by the wind, not by the fire, not by the arrows, not by the fear, not by any man, not by any word but his own. And that's... <laughs> And the next word, the, the, he had me write certain words that she spoke. The next thing is that we're pushing through manifestation. Now, if you think about it, the 300, they were pushing through the enemy. They were pushing through adversity. They were pushing through everything that was coming against them. They didn't go, oh, we're not going to be able to do this. There's too many of them. They said, what well, we lack in numbers, we have in strength and our minds. Our ability to think, to outwit the enemy. When we have our minds built in breakthrough, we understand if we put this forward and this forward and this forward and this forward, God is going to come through. If we put this forward and this forward and this forward and this forward, God is going to come through. But then, because now we're seeing the pattern we're seeing how God is working. We're like, okay, so we're going to skip steps three, four, and five. And we're just going to go to six. And God comes through. And then we're like, okay, we don't need to jump all the way to six. Now I can do it in one. And he's going to come through. And she was talking about the 24-hour anointing. Because as we get more skillful, as we get more in tune, as we get more into the vibration of God, now we're constantly breaking through the walls. We're constantly, the sh this is how we're doing. This is us. There's no way Lucifer can come in and put a ball. 
There is no way the Lucifer can come in and create any fear. There is no way that anything can come through because the vibrations that we are vibrating at are so strong and so consistent that nothing can stand in our way. So we're doing instantaneous breakthroughs. We're doing instantaneous walking. We're doing, we're walking in our blessings. We're doing it. We're not thinking it. We're doing it. We've gone from thinking to doing to just being in the blessing. And they're consistent and it's always going on because we're, it's like the hummingbird. Oh my Lord. It's like the hummingbird. The hummingbird can't stop fluttering its wings because it dies. And that's what will happen to us. If we stop moving with God, if we stop vibrating with God, we go back to death. And guess what? There's no coming back to this vibration anymore. There's no coming back to this level of vibrating with God anymore because we've shown that we were untrustworthy. He is bringing Gianni Nev's word <coughs> T times word together. <clears throat> and he's showing you that when you're vibrating at this level, because this is how fast, this is how fast the fluttering wings of a, of a hummingbird are. They're just, they're just going and they're going and they're going. That's why they can move backwards and forwards. They can do anything they want and the enemy can't stop them. Why? Because they are the blessing of God. <sighs> I said a mouthful. I said a mouthful. The other passage that God gave me, which was what I was going to go into before getting on this live, or this video, but... He gave me first Kings chapter one chapter one verses one through four. And it talk it was talking it's talking about David reaching old age. And now because he was old, he was dying, and Bathsheba was worried that her son, David's son, would not receive the blessings of God, would not receive the anointing of being king because there was already another that was trying to take the place of or Haggith the son of Haggith oh no it's Bathsheba is the, 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 the woman who has the, the son of David Haggith is the mother of Adon Adonijah who is the, king, the person trying to take David's son's place as king. And so, and the way that this young man is trying to take the, the, the king, thr the throne, is by not including the, gods of pro the, the prophets of God, not including the words of God. He is trying to circumvent the system to get into position. And this is how a lot of our blessings are blocked because when we're, not, when we're not aware of how we're supposed to be walking with God, of how we're supposed to be positioned according to God's will, we tend to allow the enemy to take our place by putting in counterfeits, by putting in individuals who are still in the world, who haven't crossed over into the light, who haven't come back to God. So because they're still in the world and they're still be and they're being led by Lucifer, he can he knows. He's like, oh, this person, you're about to meet someone that is going to change your life forever. 
<laughs> but you don't see it. You don't understand it because you're too young. You're too stupid. <laughs> that is what Ariel said. Don't be stupid. You know, you're too dumb to see that God is moving for you. So I'm going to send this individual who is still in the world. And they're going to come in contact with that individual. And because when people are in the world, they're willing to do anything to get what they want. As a child of God, you will only do what God tells you to do. But as a child of the world, you'll use manipulation, you'll use coercement, you'll use fault witness, you'll use your body, you'll use any and all means to accomplish what you're looking to do. And that's what this passage is about. It's about the people who have manipulated and have taken position of things that don't belong to them. And in this passages, David gives, King David gives instruction to the prophets of God and says, take my son, take him to this location, have this priest anoint him, have him declare him king, and then I want you, my prophets, to go out into the, into the kingdom and confirm that my son is the king. So, I hope you're spending your days learning. And how cool is it? How cool is it? This book I purchased because Ariel had purchased it. Because God had led her to purchase that book. And God has led me to purchase that book. But he didn't let me read it right away. I haven't started reading it until recently. And I know that there's a lot more revelations that he has for me in that book. Because now I need to act as a queen. Now I need to act as a mother to my children, to my husband. I need to lead in the femininity that God has given me to produce heirs to produce a line of godly children. And I don't know, I do know that God is not going to allow me to show my husband and my children right away. But I don't know what that looks like. I don't know if he's going to have me record videos and then not put them online or if he's going to have me come on at a set time 